This is IBM Museum. We're back with the Model 70 here and the external 4869-001 with the asterisk on front to get the diskette adapter A set up further to install the software on the, on the machine. And I will go through, I wanted the, the uh, floppy diskettes visible uh, those diskette drives as well in going through this process because I'm going to go through in classic style to where I've got that the orange diskette is the reference diskette for the Model 70 and Model 80 and I don't actually have any ADF files on that diskette that it wouldn't include otherwise uh, just like we had with the earlier video and then the yellow diskette is for the the option diskette for that diskette uh, adapter A um, that's in I and I've moved around the slots. I'll, I'll show you once I go through and I'll, I'll go off screen and you'll just see my hands going over the the details there and later on we'll go to a point of actually putting up the uh, a video capture of the screen as we boot up and go through that process. So let's get started. And I've, I've gone through and I've, I've actually pulled the bay adapter, as you can see, and um, also that, that pass-through adapter out of the slot and actually move, moved over the diskette adapter A to that slot just so I later on with the video, once I get talking about the internal diskette drives, I've got that connector in a little bit better location uh, to connect up uh, a possible internal diskette uh, from there coming up with a, uh, a power source. And I could even go through, I, I probably will even demonstrate connecting up the GoTech to that um, connector as well. And I'll, I'll have to come up with power in some form off of there. The Model 70 normally doesn't have that internal um, power connection in the uh, internally there to, to run the drive. Um, but we'll see what we can come up with in that regard. So I'm going to have to go through the reconfiguration of the, the system anyway. And I've left the, the serial adapter in there. Um, it's got the two... DB9 serial ports, um, and that does have an ADF on the on the reference diskette. Um, the reason I wanted to move that beyond getting rid of that passive adapter as well is I I can take advantage of that 32-bit uh, slot in the center, and that may be for memory or something else I get into and kind of can show a little bit later on of the ADF and the installation, the initialization files that are required for those memory adapters, various ones. I'm going through and inventorying over the the memory box I have at this point. Now, I've, I've also gone through it and I've put in a uh, just a relatively blank hard drive so we don't really have to go through anything when we, um, on that boot up process or anything else. And it's real easy to see the files and everything else that we'll get into. Um, I think even this doesn't even have a, a full DOS installation. It just has the ability to, to boot. We may even get prompted for a date and time if it doesn't have an auto exec pad. Or we'll see the entries that we may have to put in to the config sys and auto exec bat to run that uh, software as well. Now, I only have one of the earlier adapters. And so I, I went just with the, the later adapter that I'll show in a moment um, just because I have so many more of them. And even though these are functionally equivalent, they do have slightly different versions of the floppy diskette controller chip. And I thought of software maybe to even determine the, the version of these diskette adapter A's would be possible. I mean, this chip does... Uh, except a, a query to report a version number. There's a, a particular um, C 
sequence and software you can use uh, that, that uh, makes the, the floppy drive controller report the version at a, whenever it's at a, and you just take advantage of the, that's a functionality of the chip in reporting its, its version. And that's a, a big concept that we may encounter later on uh, of determining chip levels and versions. Um, there are some named, codenamed chips and even adapters with, um, with the IBM systems that um, we can go through and even determine chip versions or microcode versions to run those chips is, an, is uh, another angle there. And of course, many, uh, much more later content uh, possible with all the aspects of that. Now, I went through and I, as I said, I, I went, um, I put the, the later model diskette adapter A in there since I just have so much more of those. And it, it does have just that slightly different 34-pin uh, header. Um, and we'll just see how we route the cable for that if we, if we get a... Um, put a, a GoTech in the system, maybe in this like the speed drive location, and we can just run the the cable over the top. And it's a straight um, 34 pin um, connector at, at both sides. Uh, just a uh, what ultimately um, is a, a female end on both sides um, of that ribbon cable to plug into that uh, connection. And then on, on the GoTech side as well. Or a, a regular internal clone um, 1.44 megabyte diskette as well. So let's go through. We've got um, power connected. I'll get the, the uh, screen capture up. And we can see it as it boots up. And go from there. See what, see what happens. And I'm just trying to position the windows here to be able to uh, to have that view of the me loading the diskettes and things like that, swapping diskettes, um, yet still being out of the way of any screen capture. So we'll just see. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the... Um, the reference to get in the drive. Okay. And this is a system that goes through and also if it detects the reference to get system in the drive, it goes through and boots right up. We're looking relatively good on screen positions. So we're going to do enter. We're going to, uh, going to automatically configure the system. Now, it, it will find that it doesn't have that ADF file in there at some point for that, um, what ultimately is slot three, as it's showing there. Okay, insert the diskette with the correct file and press enter. And as I say, yellow diskette is the what would ultimately be the option to get for that diskette adapter A. So we have it in, press enter. Okay, and then it immediately prompts us after it copies that ADF file, make sure that the reference diskette is in the drive. There we've got it. And that also writes that ADF file to the reference diskette for a later the later time. If you happen to configure the system again, you won't necessarily be prompted for that option diskette. Okay, automatic configuration is complete. And we've gone through and we already had the, the time set and things like that. So it should not complain. I'm you know I'm taking it on that we're not gonna get any warts here by ejecting that that reference diskette. And we do have the 4869 drive connected 
to the back of the diskette adapter A. It's powered on as you see. I'm looking to get straight to the DOS prompt in this instance. Now there are OS2 files on this option diskette as well. And normally we can't, uh, we wouldn't boot from that diskette or anything else. There may be uh, option diskettes or diskettes that are included, even sets of diskettes are included with particular adapters that you run through and you boot from those, uh, those to go through an insta installation process for those adapters. So we have the, the C drive prompt. What I'm gonna do here is we're just gonna look at what is on this option diskette. I actually am not even aware of the files uh, that we have. So we have um, the ADF for the first file. And I'm not sure if that's a external 5DD, if that's like maybe a OS2 file or something of that matter. And then we have the diagnostic for it. And... Then we have the IBM Diskette 5. And clearly that sys file, um, they'll, I think there's likely that one of those will actually be put in a, uh, in the config sys as uh, to, to be able to run or initialize that external drive. Now, in this case with the, as I pointed out earlier with the diskette adapter A, and we'll see part of this process, this internal connector, and again, it's one drive per uh, connection, one internal drive, one external drive. And there may be instances on, on a lot of systems like the MAL70, MAL55 SX, that that space and that lack of drive power kind of nullifies the need for that that internal connection but having that external and specifically 1.2 megabyte um, diskette drive of the 4869 type the 4869-002 for the 1.2 megabyte requires this adapter to be in the system for that for that connection this internal connection is, if you had diskettes drives connected to both um, points, it's going to initialize or set up the internal drive first. The next available drive letter is going to be assigned to that internal drive if it's present, and then the external drive. And later on, when we get through and in, uh, connect up, and as I go through the internal diskette drives of the IBM PS2s, We'll, we'll get a chance to see that um, in the software as well. And so I might just seg right over to, um, in a way with this adapter to uh, the, those videos of the, uh, the internal diskette drives. So what I'm gonna do kind of blindly in this case is I'm just going to and that's, we weren't prompted for the, um, the time and date. So at least we've got an auto exec dot bat in there. I'm just going to switch over to the A drive and we're going to do rather blindly. that executable just to see if it's some kind of installation or okay installation program for the 5.25 inch disk adapter d device device driver okay install the device driver on 
and press one or two. So we're going to press one in this instance. And again, there's an option for installing that on diskette, it looks like. And then enter. And I don't know if the, um, that was quick. I don't know if the, um, if the, uh, you could use arrow keys or something else as well besides the one or two. I just pressed one and enter. So let's get back to the C drive. Let's look at our directory. Oh, and this does have more bunch of stuff. DOS directory, mouse directory, WordPerfect 5.1. And it looks like I even worked on the planar ID basic program on here at some point. So uh, the config sys is the file modified. It didn't modify my autoexec.bat, which is last modified on Halloween of 1995. How's that for you? And, huh, not even that long ago. Well, I guess since I pulled this off of 55SX, that's when I put that UNPC program and things like that on there. But this has some nice stuff. It might be even good to leave this on the drive, uh, leave this on the Mall 70. Do not put it back. So let's actually and I'm treating that that is not going to be a big that we don't have to pipe that into a more. Okay, last drive. Okay. And why did it do a slash? Does that do like the root? directory, but it add that device equals slash dollar fdd5 dot sys um, into the config sys. So let's go through and eject the, dis the ultimately the option diskette and control delete to reboot. Okay, so you heard kind of the noise. Um, and I'm going to hide actually that. Okay, so 5.25 external diskette drive installed as drive D and I thought I saw a different version of this one time that reported actually whether it was um, was a 360 KB or 1.2 megabyte, but I'm not seeing with this. And this is version 1.0. Maybe I had seen a later version of that, but uh, this is the file. And I'll, I'll link to that, that web page that Lewis Olin has for this as well. Um, I need to look around and find out if there's a later version of this as well, because, um, I just remember that earlier, that earlier, um, so maybe a better view would have been to have the external view there. But so what we're going to do now that it's the, we know it's a D drive, we can go ahead and get these adapters out of the way to put the diskette in there. And it actually locks the diskette in place. And this is this is just an example. 101 
PC hints and tips, just a uh, diskette that I had, and that's diskette one of two. I just want to go through and kind of show, hey, if we do a, oh, <laughs> I get the, uh, get my drive letters mixed up. I don't want to go back to A. I want to do a directory of the D drive. And it just has that big executable, just almost close to, I mean, that's probably full capacity of that diskette of 362, 436 bytes. So I was looking even if it had a nice long directory listing or something else, just showing all the files and made all that noise that it's just kind of associated with the, um, you've heard kind of some of the clicks as it accesses that. Okay, so we maybe have an earlier DOS version. Oh, we've got PC DOS 5. Well, I was going to run the MSD command. So, okay. Okay. And I don't know if I really want to make this video any longer. I may have where I've got the um, SIT program, the system information tool on that red diskette. And this might be just, I can probably um, do that in another video of running through the system information tool on the Model 70. I'll probably do that for a next video. Um, I just want to see what it uh, what it identifies to the system. I haven't run that before on the Model 70, but I'm going to do that in the next video. And that, just as a teaser there as well, I'll probably go through and um, post that system information tool online and provide the 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 link with that video uh, to where other others can start running it on their PS2s as well um, to get results. I know that there's been a little bit of interest in the videos and we will just go from there. But that's all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you. <laughs>